Welcome to the mostly definitive guide on the Ford Mustang Shelby GT500. In this video, you'll find how good this car is, the ways to drive it, and how good it can perform against its rivals, and whether or not you should buy this car. So strap in and let's go for a ride in this thing. The Ford Mustang Shelby GT500 is a high-performance American muscle car. In other words, it is a fast car that packs a ton of power but also a lot of weight, and a little bit of a hefty price tag at 6.3 million yen. This particular version is from 2007, and thanks to the supercharged V8 under the hood, it packs a ton of punch with it having 502 horsepower and 597 lb per feet when stock which is quite close to some of the tire force in game, even having more than some of them. However, despite this huge amount of power, this car weighs a lot at 3920 pounds or 1782 kilograms, and besides that it is a quite draggy car. This car also has a front engine rear wheel drive layout, and also the brakes of this car, they aren't that good. What this results in is that the Shelby GT500 packs a lot of power to the rear wheels while not having enough braking or enough grip to compensate for the 251 horsepower that are sent to each of the rear tires. And with the drag it has, it results in a car that can be quite fast in its acceleration but not good enough in its handling nor in its top speed. And when you're driving it, you'll be feeling in a sort of limbo as you don't know whether the car will oversteer or understeer but it will hold itself in the middle. And when you give it too much power, it results in a devastating step out which can mean the end of your run, since it's a very wheel spinning car. In Amarty, this car represents one of the few American cars in the game, and as such, it will have two main rivals that I'll be designating for this video. First off will be the Corvette C4, arguably the car that the Mustang is meant to be replacing for being the top one of that continent. The Mustang has around 100 horsepower more, but weighs way too much compared to the Corvette, and they're a full decade apart in release. The other rival it has is the Nissan GTR R35. Even though the R35 is classed as a Tire 4, the Mustang GT500 has around 40 horsepower more than it, and it also weighs about the same. But they are also really close to the year that they launched, and the R35 is a 2009 model. Meanwhile, the Mustang is a 2007 one. Of course, these two cars do have their main difference in their handling, as the R35 has a Tesla and it's an RWD car, while the Mustang is rear wheel drive. The GT500 obviously does have a bigger list of cars that are challenging it and are trying to be faster than it, but I feel like this is the closest comparison you can make with cars that hit either a similar year or the place that it comes from. So let's get into the actual juicy part, do all of its spec actually give it any justice? To find this out, let's head to Shirozato. The Shelby is a car with a lot of power, so let's see if that works for anything in this 1km plus drag challenge. To test out its acceleration, let's do a small drag race against time. The supercharged monster will reach a top speed of 289km and it will accelerate from 0 to 100 kmh in just 4.5 seconds, 0 to 200 kmh in 10.7 seconds, and 0 to 250 in 17.1 seconds. It will run this road in just 30 seconds and finish at 282 km. So let's try that with a 200 km to 0 kmh test now. It will break to a stop in just 5.1 seconds, which isn't that good. In terms of its agility, in this particular event, it can run a 21 second time, which is a little bit pathetic since this marble called the Legacy will beat it, with a time lower than it while having 3 times less the torque. So how will all of this apply when we put this car into a head-to-head -head drag race against all of its main rivals? We also brought a Honda NSX NC2 for good measure. So let's see in what position this GT500 will end up against all of these cars.
Right, instead of just a drag race, let's run a 0 to 250 km to 0 run. And let's see if anything will change. So the Shelby appears to be one of the best cars in terms of straight line performance, and definitely much better than the Corvette. But how fast is it around an actual track? For this test, we'll be running the new Tokyo JP course, which has a lot of info regarding the pace of cars since 2021. In this case, our old Mustang GT ran a 1.14 seconds 46 back in 2021, while it was tuned by Tela. This new GT500 version ran a 1 minute 8.62 seconds lap. This is good enough to actually beat the Corvette by 2 seconds, as it can actually compete with the R35 during bad laps. However, my actual best time with the R35 was a 107, which beats the GT500. And the old patch 6.1 version got a lap that was 2 seconds faster than this current patch 7 Mustang. So with all of this information on the Mustang, let's see how you can drive it on Otsuki and C1.
Alright, let's get down to the big question, should you buy this car? The Shelby GT500 is a high power phone car. The reasons that result in this is the huge amount of power that it has, plus the phone handling and the way that the car can be used for multiple purposes. And it can also beat a lot of detailed trees. Plus the huge amount of body kit it has, it makes it one of the most customizable cars in game and just a good reason to give it a look. But this thing has a lot of issues once you start looking closer. Most of the upgrades on this car won't work out as well as you think, plus it is a high skill car, and most drivers won't be able to actually handle the power it puts out. It can beat a lot of cars, sure, but it isn't the best car. It's also supremely bad on uphills, due to the huge amount of wheel spin and it is not a car that you can rely on all the time, as it is drawn to killing crowds. Overall, the Mustang is a great car for those who are able to handle it, but most of you won't be able to. For this reason, I declare that you should only buy or use the Mustang if you are someone that's approaching the endgame of MRT and wants something to spice things up. If you are a new player, don't buy this car, especially since the pricing of this car isn't that great, but rather it's a middle point between the sports and the classic supercars but you can still get faster cars like the GTR R34 for cheaper prices. And with that, we can conclude this guide. Thanks to all of you guys who stuck around to the end, and if you liked it, check out my Discord server link and Patreon in the description if you wanna support me, or just subscribe. Anyway, that is all for today, so goodbye to all of you.